Hey, Steve here from GetRubix.com. First of all, I want to say thank you to everybody for an awesome response to our uh, start of the brand new uh, the YouTube channel, the screencast series, and we're really hoping it's going to be an awesome addition to the blog we do now at GetRubix.com. So we're changing the format of basically just going in and getting right to the point of answering questions or showing some concepts and uh, this will allow us to hopefully get these out a little bit quicker. So for today, I'm going to start by addressing some questions I got uh, based on the first uh, video where I showed the Windows 11 autopilot enrollment and talked about suppressing the, the retail teams or the chat app that's now standard with Windows 11. It's geared at consumers and retail and absolutely something that all organizations I work with want to have suppressed or uninstalled or blocked, so I figure we'll, we'll get right into that. Um, let me just go ahead and we'll get into it. So what I have prepared here are uh, two machines. So first, let's go ahead right into the desktop here. Uh, actually, nothing really to show there. Let's bring in our virtual machine. Now, this is a clean Windows machine, uh, Windows 11. And you can see on it, it's got this little guy down here, this chat app. And if I click on it, you can see it's kind of the consumer version of Teams. I guess they're going for like an iMessage thing or, you know, some kind of WhatsApp deal. Um, and if you do want to use your Worker School account, it's a separate app anyway. So this built in piece to Windows is uh, just out of the box. So understandably, uh, an organization, right, for business use would want to suppress that. Okay. Well, how do we actually suppress it, right? So going through quite a few different steps, right? You can manually go to settings in Windows 11. We can search for apps. I believe it comes up under, it might just be Teams actually. Let's see. Yeah, Microsoft Teams. So it's not deceiving at all. And I can uninstall it from here. Now, how are we going to do this remotely shouldn't really be a problem, especially given the way we would normally do these things with uh, bloatware removal or provisioning package. One interesting thing that we found, though, with um, Windows 11 is that it's, it, it's not really an app in terms of the way we would uninstall it. It's very much rooted into the OS, right? So much so that um, I'll kind of show you here the actual way to... Uh, kind of figure out where it is and what it's doing. Let me just share this with you right here. It's actually in the registry. So if we were to look here, actually, let's keep with this machine. Let's see if we could just bounce over there pretty quickly. Uh, that's fine. Okay. So we're going to head to uh, HKLM, right? Software. It's going to be Microsoft Windows. scrolling again. I mentioned that in the last video. Someone pointed it out. I don't know why I'm not typing this in. Maybe I just like scrolling better. Communications. Okay. Okay. So there is a, uh, a registry setting we can add called configure chat auto install. And I'm actually going to flip for a second to show you one of our enrolled machines. This was similar to the machine I showed you last time. Uh, when we were testing the Windows 11 autopilot enrollment. And you'll notice here, um, I have the professional Teams, the business one, but Teams itself, uh, that retail version is not on this box. And if we go searching for it, we're, we're not going to find it. Um, let's actually do that real quick. Yeah, so Microsoft Teams, this is the corporate version coming from the machine-wide installer. Right, this is not the retail version. This is what we want. This is what we're pushing the endpoint manager, but we got to get rid of the chat one. So how did we do it? So if I go to the same reg key here, yeah, let's go ahead and look for that. You know what? We will type this time just for kicks. Okay. Uh, current version. Communication should be, there we go. Okay, 
take a look at what we have here. Configure chat auto install. All right, and we have that set for zero. So this actually, th this setting will prevent that retail version of chat from auto installing. Um, if it's set to zero, the only problem here, and we came across this, uh, typically when we do something from Intune, like a PowerShell script, right? If we're going to add a registry, it's going to be run as NT authority system. That's traditionally how the Intune management extension works. Uh, when you're uh, pushing a script or an application, it's how we test our apps. Uh, there's a write up on it on the blog. I'll put a link to it so you can see what we're talking about. Um, when we talk about testing app deployment, but in this case, uh, that wasn't really it. One of the things we found, uh, if we go ahead and look at permissions here, um, you're going to see uh, only it, it's trusted installer that has full control over it. Obviously, our users aren't, but if we look at system, system doesn't have control over this registry key. So, you know, being able to run the script from PowerShell didn't work for us and we found out why. So, right, so what do we do here, right? How do we, how do we take care of this? Um, so obviously we'd have to do some kind of script. And uh, I'm gonna show you this one here. Um, is this the correct one? Oh, you know what? Sorry, give me one second. Let's get the correct version here, actually. That would help if we did that. That's the thrill of the live video. Okay, so I wanna talk a little bit about what we're doing here. It's not a long script and we are using a task because um, we're gonna do some elevation hopping, right? So trusted installer is very difficult to do. Um, so a few things, action and principle, right? And this is uh, parameters for registering a scheduled task. Our first task is really simple. We are calling the PowerShell program and we're passing through the argument uh, of basically adding this reg key, right? So the value configure chat auto install, the type is a D word. Um, uh, we're adding the uh, uh, decimal value as a zero force. And the principle, we're actually setting it up as built-in administrators. Why are we doing this? We're doing this because we can't do it as trusted installer here. We're calling it uninstall chat, and we're gonna go ahead and register it. Now what we do is we create a new com object, right? That we connect to and in here, we can actually, uh, we can go ahead and refer, uh, create these variables that refer to what we want, right? So we're referring to the trusted installer service that we want, right? So now when we actually go and call the task, we're gonna start it, uh, we're gonna start it manually, we're not, we're not having it auto start in the beginning. When we call it, we can actually pass that user parameter through, right? Because we're using the com object. Um, so now we can essentially make that task run as the trusted installer. And that's gonna give us the, the permission we need here to set this. Oh, that's our toast notification. Um, back to the script here, you could see that uh, one interesting thing, uh, and we have my engineer, Jesse, to thank for this. Uh, most of his answers, if you have something wrong with a script, are generally gonna come from that you didn't let it sleep or rest. So we're giving it a quick start sleep before we kill the task. Uh, without this, the, it, it's gonna stop doing the task as soon as it's, before it's even run in most cases. So uh, we're gonna run the task to add the reg key. We're gonna go ahead and let the script sleep for five seconds, and then we're gonna stop the task. And now all we have to do is unregister the scheduled task. Remember, we're still running this from system because that's where PowerShell is deploying it. Um, and that's it. Let's talk about where we're deploying this. Uh, we don't need Chrome. We need Edge. Okay. Devices. This is our endpoint manager environment. If I go down to scripts, there it is. Uninstall chat. You see it's very successful. We are running it as, we're not running it under with the logon credentials, so it's running a system, it's running in 64-bit, and it's assigned to our device group. So what'll happen is during enrollment status, right, we've talked about this before, the scripts will run before the apps. So this gives me plenty of time to make sure the script is there way before the user logs in, right? And let's go take another look. So because that's there, 
right? I don't have the chat app. I only have Teams. And that's about it. I'm going to post a link to the script, right? So you can check it out and, uh, you know, hopefully make this work. I, I think it's interesting to know here, this is the first thing we came across in Windows 11 that was a little bit of a different context for us. Usually, like I said, it's, it's the NT Authority system. So who knows what will change both on the Windows client side with Windows 11 and an endpoint manager, but it's good now to have a way to, to kind of go through this. So, um, yeah, well, hopefully that was helpful. If you have any further questions, keep them coming. Uh, we have a pretty good list here of some stuff we're going to tackle in the next few screencasts. So, uh, you know, let us know and we'll address it if we can. Until next time.